Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect King of Games. Today, we are going to be following up deck profile madness with an epic duel between Invoked Wind Witch Spellbooks and Zark Magicians. These two decks are really awesome. One of the more known inside of the Invoked Wind Witch Spellbooks and the other one being Zark Magicians, not necessarily Pendulum Magicians. This one's going to be more focused on special summoning Zark or more importantly, just abusing the Pendulum aspect. As you guys can see, um... The Pendulum deck is is, is extraordinarily good. I, I actually made this video a couple, I want to say a week before or during uh, the Forbidden List before any regionals dropped, and I was like, whoa, this deck is fucking tier one. Like, there's no way, no way that this deck isn't going to be tier one. It's going to reflect on the deck profile you guys are going to see shortly after this video. And we already know how Spellbook Wind Witch operates, um, or Invoked Wind Witch operates. It is a deck that is extremely good with abusing hand traps such as Ash Blossom discarding itself and then flipping all of your opponent's monsters face down and summoning a nasty Paragotrio, being able to inflict nasty damage, if not possibly gain to the opponent. This time around, he's going to be summoning his Wind Witch combo, Winter Bell into Glass Bell into Ice Bell into all those other bells, and then he's going to activate Secrets and Terraforming, provided that Zark Magicians have no response. Aliester is going to be added with the Magical Meltdown, and then Winter Bell is going to be summoned and now it seems like uh, Winvich Invoked is going to be making a huge play, but not before a Spellbook of Secrets or Spell Little Boy of Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. I think that's his name. Yeah, that's his name. Is being summoned to activate Spellbook of Knowledge to further get Invoked Windwitches some more cards. So this is really good uh, for the Invoked player. It, it looks like a Crystal Wing is definitely going to be made, and, and that's going to be extraordinarily great. Winterbell is is going to be summoned inflicting additional damage so instead of 8,000 Zark Magician should be at 6,200 so far. Wavering Eyes is going to be activated on the Winter Bell Summon destroying both the Black Fang and the Purple Poison Magician. Now this could be tide turning. Not only does Wavering Eyes search a Pendulum Monster from the deck to the hand but it triggers Purple Poison and uh, Black Fang Magician being able to destroy a monster on the field and also special summon a monster from the graveyard to the side of the field. That is just nasty. So Luster Pin is going to be activated. And Time Star Magician is going to be summoned all off of that one card combo. I guess you can technically say three. But the other two cards already serve their purpose. Skull Crobat Joker is now going to be normal summoned and activated on its effect. And that's going to be met with a Ghost Ogre. That is a strange Ghost Ogre. Felt that Ghost Ogre could have been used on maybe a scale. Possibly even even the the luster pin being you know destroying a card to searching a card um nevertheless time or uh, bleh, that magician card is going to be added from the deck to the hand that i can't even think of right now uh wisdom eye my apologies uh and upon its destruction it searches i think those cards are really safe now seeing that you know ghost ogre was already used and it is a once per turn effect luster pin is going to be activated with a duelist alliance another really busted card for this strategy and kind of fortunate that it did receive a reprint inside of the uh legendary set that has a, a princess illusion magician a cyber dragon mega fleet so many other awesome cards inside of that set so Duelist Alliance is going to add Double Iris Magician from the deck to the hand. That's going to combo really well with Luster Pin. Being able to destroy and search, search again and search again is just going to be really awesome. That combo is extremely nasty to set up. So Double Iris is going to be summoned. And we can only assume that Luster Pin is going to be activated to destroy the Double Iris. And that is going to trigger off a couple of things. Oh, with the Astrograph Sorcerer. That is yet another search on top of other searches. So it looks like all of the double irises are going to be searched as well as a time pendulum graph. So there's a lot of things going around right here. A lot of people actually, uh, the winning builds did not run uh, Luster Pin. And it, it is a really good reason. It does get stuck in the scale. It is a little bit hard to get out of the scale. And on top of that, it, the, the Ignister card isn't as powerful as it used to be. Don't get me wrong. It's still a very powerful 
powerful card, but it isn't as game impactful that it used to be. But in this Zark Magicians, it's really good, mainly because it allows you to destroy your cards. It doesn't really bother itself being in the scale, and there's not really uh, much else to do. Uh, you can destroy it with Wavery Guys. You can normal summon it. More often than not, you definitely want it in that scale and force that opponent, your opponent, to destroy it with uh, their card effects. It's it's one of those cards that are just really good inside of the deck. So as you guys can see, a huge board was made in 30 or 5,500 damage. Was it 55 or 4,500 damage was taken from uh, Invoked Win Witch. And we're going to see exactly how they respond losing more than half of their life points uh, to this. This is probably going to be game. Who really knows? So Spellbook of Secrets is going to activate two at, at Spellbook of Knowledge. Knowledge is doing a discard the little boy. And I was completely like, whoa, you can do that? And then I have to like read Spellbook of Knowledge and it says Spellbook card and Spellbook Magician of Prophecy is a Spellbook card. And you're just like, oh, you sneaky you. That's nice. That's real nice. Wasn't even expecting that. Completely forgot that that could even been a thing. So Goful was going to be summoned, giving uh, Invoked Wind Witch two tokens, but I am 100% sure these two tokens are immediately going to be used to make a Proxy Dragon and then a Deco Talker, which is going to allow uh, Invoked Wind Witch to go into their extra deck for two cards uh, instead of one, instead of placing just uh, a Crystal Wing or a Macabre in the extra monster zone. So Alastair is going to be summoned unfortunately for invoke most of the cards in this deck are dark monsters so unless they want to summon kaliga it's not going to end up very well for it but proxy dragon was just sent to the graveyard part of the gofu combo to send proxy dragon to the graveyard and make the macabre with a Biko bulker on it so that's pretty nasty uh being able to use the said cards to make that unfortunately purple poison is on the field so invokes are going to think about that attack and then retract it but now looking at it they're not in a great position seeing that purple poison is on the field it's not going to be nice it's almost like taking your girlfriend out on a date that you've been going out with with a couple of months and been mating, waiting you wait for sex just to find out that she was a dude or is still a dude that's pretty uneventful for a day and probably how invoked feels uh thinking that it was the big guy on campus until purple poison magician had butted its head and it's not really much that invoked can do to stop purple poison saying that it's an already face-up card on the field macabre can only negate the activations of cards um, and that's not necessarily good so uh time stars already used all of its, uh, you know, a usability attacking into the Macabre, just in case if there was a double Aliester, it really wouldn't matter. And then the Purple Poison is going to activate to give it a boost. And then Purple Poison is going to activate again to destroy a monster on the field. And seeing that Deco Talker doesn't have any link points or any monsters pointed to it that it can tribute, it's going to lose itself. Uh, and wait, hold on. Nope, Solemn Strike is going to be activated. My apologies. And that's probably going to prevent game. Still, uh, Time Pendulograph is going to activate. Nope, doesn't look like that's going to activate either. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is going to be activated to stop the Time Pendulograph. And it looks like only 200 is going to be taken from uh, the Invoked Life Points after Time Sorcerer attacks over the Beko Bulker. Still trying to wonder wh what's wrong with the Beko Bulker. Why, why is it still in the field? Nope. Is it, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that time pitchograph attacked uh, probably verbally and not not necessarily physically that we can see so anyways going into the next play uh, wavering guys is going to be activated destroying both the luster pin and I believe what was a double iris to add a performer power skull crowbat joker and a time pitch on the graph scroll crowbat joker is going to add another purple poison magician and this is almost like the zodiac dryden effect or artifact moral attack effect being able to play cards and destroy your opponent's cards on your opponent's turn is just really really good uh going against the opponent and they don't really have too much 
of a response to it. So I don't know what's going on right now, but Purple Poison is in the pin scale. Now Biko Bulker is going to be lost in translation and there's 200 life points left for the invoked. Now another Gofu is going to be summoned and two tokens are going to be summoned in response. I am assuming that another Biko Bulker is going to be summoned as well. And this strategy is actually uh, takes up a lot less than the Link Spider combo where you would have to play two Link Spiders uh, just to make the Deco Talker. Now you can just use Proxy Dragon because it is an effect monster and it doesn't need, uh, it can be used with tokens. That Beko Bulker is going to be something with the Aliester. Not sure what can be made with all of this, seeing that he's still in the same position, a Purple Poison Magician on the field, and a Time Pendulum Graph is going to be activated anyways, targeting the Purple Poison and the Deco Talker. Not sure why it's being targeted so early, probably because Beko Eco Balker would have a link and he would still be able to gain the search effect. So Time Pendulum McGrath is going to be activated. Protecting it seems to be the Time Star Magician. And since a card wasn't protected, or since one of the cards did not leave the field, Time Pendulum McGrath can send a card on the field to the graveyard. So really nasty combos. Uh, Aliester is going to be summoned and that's going to add an invocation but I don't really see a uh, invoked monster that could be special summoned that would change this game uh, this game state right now possibly if there was an access to an Iliasum then maybe we would be in a different situation seeing that Time Pendulum Graph already used its effect but that doesn't seem to be the case it looks like this game is over we're going to be going into game 2 just waiting and waiting to see what's going to happen. Man, I like waiting. I, oh, just, just, do you guys like waiting? I, I just thought it was one of those. Hey, you, don't don't click off this video. You don't. Oh, wait, hold on. It looks like he's going to make the water invoked monster. And what this card does is it can't be destroyed uh, by opponent's card effects and it can't be targeted. But unfortunately, it can still be destroyed by battle. This is almost like... You know, the end of a game. He's thinking it can attack it. I mean, I think it can attack in defense, but you apply it to attack for attack instead of defense. And nonetheless, you can still just always activate Purple Poison Magician to get over the monster. And um, yeah, I, I don't think any of that works. Anything like that. So he's going to go ahead and attract the attack. But like I said, it doesn't matter. It's, it's almost like in watching an NFL game that that's already over. Like uh, kind of like how the Saints beat the living snot out of the Panthers. You already knew it was game by uh the first quarter or like how the ravens got the shit knocked out of them by the jags though the jags like you you you, you would have never thought that was coming i'm glad i'm not a gambler because i would have put all of my money on the ravens it's not that i don't have any type of uh respect for the jags it's just i would expect the ravens to be you know that perennial team but looking at joe flacco they should have signed colin kaepernick there I go I'm getting I'm rambling not that this part of the game matters to be honest with you guys I don't really see wait hold on what is he doing what, what is he doing I, I think I see something nasty is that something nasty hold on it, it looks like that he's going to exceed summon okay so white wing magician is going to be summoned that's three of the requirements is the fourth one in the graveyard that, that's interesting. I, I really want to see how this works out. Is Zark going to be summoned inside of Zark Magicians? Uh, I don't want to say it's a little late, but, you know, it's better late than never. So Double Iris is going to be used as material. And White Wing is going to be sent to the graveyard to search the Black... Or the Wisdom... The Wisdom... The Wisdom Eye Magician. My apologies. And I'm just watching intently because if Zark is summoned, then... You know, that, that's pretty now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Looks like all four monsters are being banished to summon Zark to the field. Now, that is fucking awesome. Never thought that we would see something so awesome in the end of the game. But this is a deck that can easily make Zark. So watch out for an undestructible 4K beater hitting the field. That with Deco Talker and the Time Star, just when we thought this game was over, it did get a little bit more exciting for Pendulum or Zark Magicians, uh, being able to summon Zark with ease. On to the next game, we're going to be seeing uh, possibly, or what I would hope, is Invoked Wind Witch. Uh, uh, invoked Wind Witch. What was the other counterpart? Invoked Wind Witch. Uh, Spellbooks. There we go. 
going first and looks like a plethora of cards are going to be activated magical meltdown and spellbook of secrets meltdown to search the aliester and then secrets to search the little boy which is going to be discarded with the spellbook of knowledge to draw two additional cards this deck is a really good anti-meta deck gofu is going to be summoned to bring out two tokens to make uh, obviously the proxy dragon and then into the decal talker aliester is going to summon be summoned to add the invocation from the deck to the hand so as we can see proxy dragon is going to be summoned and now the deco talker and then uh invocation is going to be used to make the macabre that followed with some nasty back row i mean this deck could be really good going into the next format uh let's see if this this video can get uh i don't know just try to give me a hundred likes because commentary for this has been on point and i'll do the invoke deck profile too i have the pendulum zark magician deck profile but y'all gotta work for that invoke deck profile it'll be a little bit more touched up a little bit more polished i think it'll be a lot better so going into the game invoked has a choice to negate the time pendulum graph which seems to be more so bait than anything wisdom is going to be activated are you going to negate that invoked and then double iris is going to be activated double iris's effect is going to activate itself you can't stop that effect to search a monster and it looks like he didn't stop anything you probably had to stop the double iris and then time pendulum graph is going to be met with a ghost ogre and snow rabbit this is still a pretty hard board to beat and if there was at least one solemn strike it probably would have been game right then and there for the pendulum deck i don't i don't really see how they would have overcame that so pendulum summon for one uh two uh it looks like you can pitch them summon them all because it almost doesn't matter and then the exceed summon is going to be made on top of the deco talker because the arrow does point down to a time star magician and that is exactly how you out a macabre so time star with the purple poison is going to be activated and then oh no double aliester this just got real interesting um you time star wasn't going to be able to activate its effect because macabre would have just negated it but double aliester is going to be activated unfortunately you know purple poison still can activate its effect destroying the macabre or that would have been perfect field advantage and that's something that uh, as an uphill battle that uh invokes have to realize is that uh purple poison is probably the bane of this deck's existence it's going to be pretty easy to get over cards like that um, and you're going to have to stop cards that are either going to search the purple poison or, you know, cards that are going to make purple poison live. So you, you're you going to have to stop that. And, and it doesn't really matter if the effect uh, didn't get off. It, it, the second effect got off. So the first effect to get over the Macabre didn't get off, but the second effect did. So it almost didn't matter. Duelist Alliance is probably going to be met with a Ghost Ash, maybe. That's going to search the Luster Pin. Pin is going to destroy the Iris. And now you get two searches of another iris and of a time or star pendulum graph. This time it's going to be time pendulum graph. But uh, no monsters on the field. Unless, oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be star pendulum graph. No monsters on the field. Double iris is going to be activated in the scales with a face down card. We, we can already assume that that's going to be a time pendulum graph. It's going to activate itself to destroy the double iris to destroy the deco talker. And then double iris and time pendulum graph are going to activate to get double searches as well i believe another time pendulum graph is going to be searched as well as uh i don't maybe a skull crowbat joker no a purple poison magician is going to be searched because purple poison magician is love and life in this deck so invoked has the board wind which is going to be summoned that's going to summon the uh, the glass bell, I believe. Uh, is that glass bell? Yes. Ice bell is going to summon glass bell, which is going to search the snow bell. This is going to be the first time in this game we've seen this go down. And then little boy is going to add secrets to add the spell book of knowledge to gain two additional cards. I'm really digging this engine inside of this invoked wind witch. It's allowing uh, the deck to go through more cards as well as put monsters in the graveyard. I'm just really digging this engine. And now it looks like he's going to make a uh, winter bell, which is going to inflict more damage. And then he's gonna make the crystal wing to attack for 3000 damage, at least I would think so. 
so crystal wing is going to attack for that massive damage undestructible crystal wings are pretty hard to get over especially that deco talker on the board would have been game in itself as well and then it would have been able to protect at least one of his monsters if uh you know he played his cards right which i would assume that he would have so down to 2800 to 8000 life points uh pendulum magicians are gonna have to or zark magicians are gonna have to find a way to out this situation crystal wing can negate monster effects and it can't be destroyed by battle so it looks like oh also when it battles a monster level five and higher it gains that monster's attack so we're not going to talk about that so uh purple poison is going to be activated in the scale nothing that uh crystal wing can do about that i just really feel like this invoked wind witch deck could use more back row and, and that might solve a lot of problems because it looks like a pendulum summon is going to happen so pendulum of one uh possibly another which is another purple poison is there any more monsters that are going to be pendulum summoned a uh, time pendulum graph is going to activate to target and target and what time pendulum graph does is like we said it destroys both targets and if both targets aren't destroyed it's going to send a card to the graveyard crystal wing has no protection from its destruction but ghost ogre and snow rabbit is going to be chained to the time pendulum graph so it doesn't really matter time pendulum graph is just going to fade away and crystal wing is going to be protected for a whole nother turn at least or at least for a whole nother play um so a phase down card is going to be set and then back to invoked wind witch spell book and crystal wing is is a very dangerous card uh sitting on the board it, it's it's almost like uh when you're about to get your ass whooped by your mother and she tells you to go pick a switch now you all you want to pick the smallest switch that's not crystal wing you're gonna bring the small switch and she's gonna get the big switch because that's crystal wing and whoop your ass with it and and that 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 is pretty much what the fear of Zark Magician should be looking at when it comes to cards like Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Though it can be outed uh, fairly easily, there are outs to those outs that are that pin that invoked Wind Witch, Spellbook, Magician, whatever trash can play. Now, I don't know why Ice Spell would be summoned right now. I guess just to inflict the 500 damage and it's going to attack into the Luster Pin. Time Pendulum Graph is going to be activated. A second copy. Uh, there's not really much you can do about that. It looks like Time Pendulum Graph is going to finish what what the other Time Pendulum Graph has started. Uh, no Ghost Ogre. Not that Ghost Ogre could activate anyways because uh, Time Pendulum Graph is activating and using its effect in the same time. So... It looks like it's going to attempt to destroy both cards. Since both cards weren't destroyed, it's going to send a card. And then Purple Poison might activate to destroy the Magical Meltdown. Now, it looks like... Oh, oh wow. And the Time Pendulum Graph is going to be met with a Ghost Dash. It looks like uh, if if uh, Invoked Twin Witch would have saved the Ice Bell, like, uh, I guess want to say a better play, it would have been able to make another Crystal Wing or, or you know at least something uh you know to set itself up with not that it kind of doesn't matter because time pendulum graph is still on the field and so is a purple poison magician so i i don't really see uh you know it getting around uh what's going on right now back to magicians yes luster pin is stuck in that scale and i don't really think that it's been bothering uh, you know, magicians don't know why Astrograph Sorcerer is activated. Maybe to trigger a Luster Pin to search uh, Astrograph Sorcerer, but it doesn't matter. Purple Poison is gonna attack over the Winter Bell and then Luster Pin for a direct attack. No Ignister being summoned. No, uh, no, no, nothing. So a card is gonna be set face down, and it looks like Zarks might have this. Oh no, a Quaking Mirror Force to set both monsters face down permanently. So Invoke Tool, which is left top decking, but that Quaking Mirror Force definitely helped the field. Uh, and and it looks like oh no, wow. Now all of the traps are being drawn by the invoked. Now a pendulum summon is gonna be met with a solemn, but the normal summon of wisdom eye is going to be activated and inflicting 1500 damage. Uh, looks like they might have found her footing with the Aliester and the Aliester is gonna get the invocation. And then the invocation is gonna be activated. So it looks like invoked wind witch uh, spellbook has found their footing with the top deck of uh, uh, magical meltdown it looks like purger trio is going to be made oh man and, and this light this this looks nasty but i guess time star isn't uh, a card of importance 
two invoked wind witch because it's just gonna activate itself destroying the wisdom eye this time around and triggering the time star so uh i'm not 100 percent sure what uh, invoked was thinking with that maybe they weren't expecting time pendulum graph to hit a monster on the board so now uh aliester is going to attack into uh the dragon pulse magician and uh then astrograph of sorcerer is going to be destroyed with luster pin so now we're looking at something possibly another zark play Black Fang Magician is going to be activated to destroy both cards. And this looks like it's going to be game. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed these real life games. Let me know what you guys think about them. If you prefer them for build breakdowns or whatever. Also, you guys can support your favorite Yugi tuber by visiting Patreon. Just go visit Patreon and look at the offers. Look, I'm telling you guys just to do that for right now. Also, you can buy from me on TCG Player, eBay, or just message me on Facebook. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.